Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monty, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. If you had a chance to tune in to the midweek market report, I said that there would be a chance on Thursday that we would rally up to that 20-period moving average, which is the blue line right there. And after we did that, very interestingly enough today which i'm recording this on the 9th we traded up earlier in the day and closed right on the low right in the final minutes of the trading day we tanked look at this intraday chart you see right here right around 315 it started we broke out below intraday support right here right around 330 in the last 30 minutes they pounded the stock right on to the low. So what that means is that we closed with no shadow underneath that candle on higher volume. Now remember, if you're following my trading checklist, the most important thing we look at is the price, of course, and the volume supporting that price. So the volume is increasing now on the way down. And I still have my downside target set at 325 so monday and tuesday just based on what we saw in the close here today monday and tuesday i think we're going to go lower and then we'll have to see how the rest of the week shapes up so be sure to tune in to the market rebellion webpage so you could get that midweek report and we'll see where we stand with our end line targets for next week now iwm very similar story we had a test of that moving average right here today we officially hit my downside target right there at 170.55 we closed on the low right there actually at 178.56 with a penny off i think we can count that as a score because monday we'll probably officially hit that extra penny on the downside but again because of the slight increase in volume I'm going to erase all my lines now that the targets were hit I think we're going to see a little bit lower and then I think we'll see a possible bounce. Again, it's going to have to see if we get that drop in volume on the way down before we get the bounce. So I know I'm doing a two-part forecast, but let's stick with the downside target of 176.88 up until Wednesday and then we'll see whether or not we can carry forward with this bounce. So that's IWM. If we look at the SPY, you can see, again, same story. We had a test of that moving average right there yesterday as we moved into a higher high from Wednesday's market report. And then we have this long shadow on top of that candle with no shadow underneath. So we closed again on the lows on increase in volume. Remember, the price and volume trump the oscillators right there. So we're focusing on price. We're looking at the increase in volume. Downside target still in place at 387.45. For our option traders, please take note that an alert went out earlier this morning with the instructions on how we're going to handle our put spreads next week. So make sure you get that. For those not yet subscribed to my trade alerts and would like to know more about that, just contact Market Rebellion at marketrebellion.com. Speak with one of our reps. They'll explain to you what's going on there, and then you could get plugged in. So, again, SPY, we're not moving that target at 387.45. If we look at the VIX, remember last week I said that we were looking at the weekly charts, and I said that we had 10 red candles in a row, and then I had forecasted that we would most likely come up with a green candle for the weekly chart. That's exactly what's happened look down below this week again it's a weekly chart it carries more weight than the daily chart the daily chart is not as as oversold as the weekly chart but the weekly chart is showing a cross buy signal right there on the cci and the stochastics is starting to move up so i do believe that we're going to see a continued move up over this moving average here on the daily chart so we had a, an almost a bearish engulfing candle yesterday but as it turns out that 20 period moving average is holding as support and it looks as though 
the VIX is trying to break out of this former resistance line right here. And if it holds over resistance and over that moving average, this whole area will revert back to a support level. So next week is a critical time for the VIX, and we'll have to see whether or not it starts to move higher. Remember, ultimately, I do believe we're going to move higher on the VIX, and I have a longer-term target of 41.88 that I have not moved from our weekly chart. So that is the VIX. Now, I do want to mention something before I get into the geopolitical news, and that is if you look at what's happening with silver, I did say that I was going to buy back on this close here. I was going to buy back into my complete position. I'm still in at 85%, but we have another gap forming up here. So I do believe silver is going to start to pull back. But this whole area here, for those of you who are trading, I'm still looking for a support level to be tested here right around 20 to $20.20 for SLV. Now, going to the geopolitical news, some of you are already aware that President Xi Jinping is in Saudi Arabia visiting on his trip there. And it's something that we have to keep an eye on. Remember, I, I said keep an eye on China. I know there's a lot of distractions out there, but there's also a lot going on with China. Remember, we are fighting multiple wars. We're fighting a currency war. We're fighting a political war. We're fighting an economic war. And, you know, China is looking to take over with regard to the U.S. dollar being the petrodollar. I do believe that there's some maneuvering going on to make that happen where between Russia and China, they could turn around and replace the petrodollar. And it looks as though China is starting to build that relationship and possibly bringing the OPEC countries into the BRICS nations. And again, that's a little premature to make that forecast, but it looks as though that's what they're trying to do. In addition to that, I reported on the big purchase last quarter in the gold markets of 400 tons. It does look like, and it's being confirmed here, that China is the buyer. And so we have China buying the gold. We have the U.S. dollar not backed by any gold or silver or anything. It's just backed by the taxing power of the U.S. government. And so there is that big threat of inflation. And if we don't do something as a nation to bring that standard back to our currency, then we could be toast, folks. This is a, a very big threat that no one's talking about. This came out. Remember, they, the World Economic Forum used the word destroy the commercial banks. And this one came out on Wednesday where they're looking to crush the Western banks. And again, I keep connecting the dots here. Once I see a story, I try to follow that story to see if it's developing in any sort of way. And it does look like this narrative of crushing the banks and destroying the banks is, is taking some foothold here. And so we got to keep an eye on that. And, you know, with regard to the oil and energy sector, I do believe that the weather is going to play a big part in that. And remember, if we have an uptick in the price of oil per barrel, which I'll get to in a moment, then that could raise some inflationary threats once again in the market. So keep an eye on the weather channel, believe it or not. I know it doesn't sound like that would be connected to the financial markets, but it absolutely is. Now, according to Federal Reserve, this is the most recent chart of outstanding credit as it compares to a percentage of disposable personal income. This is magnifying. In other words, the divergence between debt and personal savings is widening even further. And you can see what has happened in the past when we've had these extreme divergences. This is the crash of 2008. This was the COVID crash right here. And we are now at the widest point in that divergence. So this is a real threat. Again, I keep mentioning these things as stories to follow that are not being covered in mainstream media, whether it be a financial channel or otherwise. And we as investors and traders really have to keep an eye on that, keeping our heads on a swivel, so to speak. Now, as we get into the final slides here, I want you to pay more attention to the labor force participation rate rather than the unemployment rate and the jobless claims. This is going back as far as 1948. 
The interesting thing is we are growing in population as a nation, but the labor force participation is steadily dropping and continuing in this downward trend. So that is most likely going to bring us closer and closer to a deeper recession. And one of the things that I want to point out here is BlackRock came out. This came out today, just afternoon. This is the world's largest investment manager, and they are now putting the warning flags out that we are preparing for this recession, unlike any other. Now, if you don't know who BlackRock is, they're, they're one of the largest, if not the largest, investment manager controlling many of our stocks. And if I go look at just Yahoo Finance, for instance, I'm pulling up Google, also known as Alphabet Inc. If you go into Yahoo Finance and click on this Holders tab, you're going to see what I'm talking about here. You have the percentage of holdings by the institutions. It's usually Vanguard, BlackRock, T. Rowe Price, and State Street. These are the common and the biggest investors in most of the stocks that you're going to pull up. And you see BlackRock right here is number two. And keep an eye on this because Google is more, you know, a mega cap stock. And it doesn't matter what ticker symbol I put in here, you're going to find that BlackRock is going to most likely fall within the top five of the biggest institutional holders. So when they put out a warning such as this, you're going to have to see how this translates into the adjustments that they're making in the markets with regard to their positions. And if BlackRock starts selling because they think that the recession is going to go deeper, or maybe we might even see a shock in the stock market, BlackRock could very well be one of the institutions that, that make the first move. So keep an eye on that. Now, again, the midweek report can be found on the Market Rebellion homepage. For our members, we have great news that if you go to the member page, you can find the midweek market report without having to put in any information, your name, your phone number and such. If you're captured here at, on the member page, you won't have to fill that in. You just go click play and the midweek report will play for you. So that is the weekly market report. Have a great weekend, folks, and we'll talk to you on Wednesday. So long. I mean, you take a beginner and someone who's a little naive and doesn't really understand how options and stocks work, and then you, you can actually educate them to have more knowledge than a lot of the brokers. Brokers don't even understand a lot of stuff you guys teach. In fact, I just talked to a broker. He says, this is the only place that's taught in America.